today's vlogmas video i'm going to be sharing with you a get ready with me that i filmed over the summer that i meant to upload over the summer but didn't get around to it but it is all about the charlotte tilbury pillow talk collection so the eyeshadow palette the blush the lipstick and the liner i know some of you had wanted to see them in action and they, i might have shown them kind of sporadically here or there but this is a video using all four of the products kind of at once i think i picked up the eyeshadow palette around this time last year actually anyway a year later and i'm still absolutely loving the whole entire collection and i still use all of the products within the collection this is day 12 of vlogmas which means we're around halfway through um i guess the countdown to christmas but i hope you guys enjoyed watching today's video and i'll see you guys in tomorrow's video Bye. Hello, so today we're gonna do a get ready with me featuring the Charlotte Tilbury uh, Pillow Talk collection. I have all four items in the collection. Of course, it started with the lip liner, which she originally came out with. This is the um, lip cheat in, of course, Pillow Talk. This is probably one of her most popular liners and I definitely picked it up because of the hype and I actually really like it. It's not necessarily a color I usually gravitate towards because it's more of a pinky nude and I like my lipsticks to be a little bit more mauve, a little bit more berry, but surprisingly enough, I actually do enjoy it. So because this Pillow Talk lip liner was such a hit, she decided to come out with a lipstick. So the lipstick is in the Matte Revolution formulation, which I, absolutely love. I love this formulation because it's not a very drying matte. It is a more matte finish, but it doesn't like suck the moisture out of your lips. It actually feels more like a satin lipstick, so I love that. My favorite color in this collection is probably Bond Girl, but this color is also very lovely and it pairs of course with the lip liner really well and then she expanded the line even more to include a quad an eyeshadow quad and also a blush her cheek to cheek blush and that is a very tricky sentence to say um, is very recognizable because it's one of these duo tone blushes so you have um, typically more of a shimmery shade in the middle and then a more satin shade uh, around the rim she calls this her swish and glow blusher so you're supposed to take the outer rim all over the cheek and then just pop in the center color kind of where the apples are this is a very beautiful color on the cheeks it definitely has a bit more of a I guess a radiant finish because of that shimmer so it's not matte on the cheeks I don't really have anything quite like it I originally thought that it was going to be a little similar to um, the shade I have in um, mood exposure from hourglass but you can see how mood exposure is definitely a little bit more brown um, and then this uh, Pillow Talk blush is more rosy. So they're both beautiful shades though, and personally in my collection, I actually don't have anything uh, similar to show you to the Pillow Talk, but there are, I'm sure, very similar blushes on the market. I think I heard that one of the um, Marc Jacobs blushes was very similar to this. So um, they're around the same price point, so it's not like you're really saving any money. And I'm at this point, I, I don't know any uh, more affordable uh, alternatives for you, but it's something that I can definitely research more. And then finally, the quad. And the quad was actually probably the one I was most excited about when she released the entire collection. This is the one I purchased first. I purchased all of these products separately, but at one point you could get them in a set. But I got the lip liner first, then the lipstick, and then I got this quad, and then I went for the blusher because I figured I would just complete the collection. But I love this because it's so simple that it, you know, it's something that I would wear you know, pretty regularly. I'm not a really bold eyeshadow kind of person. I like something a little bit more natural, a little bit uh, more subdued, and this is just like me in a palette, essentially. So we're gonna use these products along with some other things in today's Get Ready With Me. Anyway, if you're interested uh, in seeing how they apply, um, then stay tuned. I'll also have some timestamps as usual for all the products that I use and also kind of at what point in the video that you'll see them in. I've already put on a primer, which is the Smashbox Primer Eye 
moisturizer. It's just the little mini that I'm trying to use up. I'm gonna try to use as many Charlotte Tilbury products that I can in this video, and actually I don't really have that many. So I'm gonna go in with the Hollywood Flawless Filter. You guys know I love the Flawless Filter. Um, I think it's so nice. I just haven't been using it lately because I've been trying to use up the uh, Glotion from L'Oreal, but this is definitely still one of my favorite uh, bases. It's not really a base, but it's a really great luminizer to wear alone or to wear as a base. Um, today I will put something very lightweight on top of it, but I just really love the glow that this gives my skin. It is, you know, very fresh looking. It doesn't really um, help the longevity of my makeup throughout the day, especially since it has been actually very warm uh, lately here in Ontario, it has hit probably 30s every single day of the week this week, which um, Of course, it's summer so it is appreciated, but it's also very very warm So a trick I like to do in the summertime when I want more of a dewy finish But I also want something a little bit more long wearing is I will put you know a very luminous uh, kind of first base on and then I'll top it with a more mattifying uh, base. So this is the Cover FX Power Play Foundation. I am in the shade, well I got G plus 50. I think I could have worked in probably two other shades but that's the one I went with. I don't really apply too much of the foundation. I'm going to use the Juno Co sponge to blend everything in. This is a new one I believe that they have. They just released it. I haven't quite worked out how to best use this sponge because it's um, obviously a different texture than your typical uh, beauty sponge because it is microfiber so it's not your typical porous sponge material but I have been really enjoying it. Um, I find that this works a little bit better when you swipe as opposed to dab. Of course, I did not keep any of the literature that came with it. They kind of talked about how to use it, but that has been my experience with it, I guess, is that um, dabbing is okay, but swiping is a little bit better. So they came out with this color, which I think they call lemon, it's yellow, but I didn't want to just get the one because the shipping was a flat rate and I figured I would just get a couple more. So I picked up the original microfiber sponge from Junico, which is this blue one, and then I also picked up the rose version. And honestly, they work pretty well. Um, I don't know yet, I haven't really been using them enough to de definitively say whether I would replace a regular sponge with one of these, but I'm not unsatisfied with this product. Um, I think with shipping and the purchase of all three of those, and I think I might have used a 10% uh, discount code, it came to about $30 Canadian. So it's about $10 a sponge, which I think is relatively affordable. I'm also going to use the Charlotte Tilbury Magic Away Concealer. You guys know this is not my favorite concealer. If you watched my concealer review, if you haven't seen that, I'll link it up here. But yeah, not my favorite. I have used quite a bit of this up though. I am amazed at how quickly I use this up just because I actually don't even use it that, that often. But I think it's just because of the type of packaging and I tend to um, twist too much product up because I never know when it's saturated enough because I will twist a couple of times but then I don't feel like I'm getting any product so then I twist a couple more times and then I'm, I have too much product so I'm just gonna use this uh, just under the eyes yeah this is something I definitely would not repurchase again uh, I just yeah I was not really happy with that concealer to set my face, I am going to use the Sephora Micro Smooth Powder. Um, this is a really great powder. Some of you guys commented that this powder reminds you a lot of the MAC Mineralized Skin Finish, and I definitely probably have to agree. I haven't used this Mineralized Skin Finish in a, quite a while, but the texture and just the general formulation of it uh, definitely is giving me skin finish vibes and that is a really great powder. I think the MAC skin finish is 30-ish dollars and this is 29 so not really saving that much money but I mean it is slightly more affordable. So I'm gonna just uh, mist my face with the Morphe Continuous Setting Mist and this is probably the only Morphe product I've ever purchased in my whole life and I am really pleased with it. I was kind of hemming and hawing about it just because 
Morphe is really, to me, like an influencer brand, and because so many people um, promote Morphe with their affiliate codes and things like that, sometimes I just think, oh, like it can't be really that good. But I tried it out in store because they, certain Sephora's now carry some Morphe products, and the setting spray is one of them. So I tried it in store, and I sprayed my face, I walked around the mall, and then I came back, and I looked at my face in the mirror again, and it actually looked really nice. So. I picked it up. The only downside is I've only had this probably for three, no, probably four weeks and it's already almost empty and I actually don't even use it every day. It's just that you go through this so quickly. It is a really fine mist and I love that because it coats your skin really evenly. There is a slight fragrance to it, but it does dissipate pretty quickly. Okay, I'm going to do the eyes before I do anything else on my face. And I'm gonna use the Milani eyeshadow primer. And I like this primer, it was $10 I think at uh, Walmart. And it works pretty well, a lot better than some of the other, I guess more higher end primers that I've used. So I just like to take a little bit and dab it. So I'm just gonna use this palette in the traditional way exactly as recommended by Charlotte herself. So each one of these shadows has a purpose according to the back of the palette. So the first shade is to prime, second is to enhance, the third is to add a bit of a smoke, and then the fourth is for a pop. So when you're looking at the palette, you kind of just have to go almost like in a clockwise order from this top left here. So this one would be to prime, enhance, smoke, and then to add a bit of a pop. So the priming shade has a bit of a shimmer to it, which I am not really one to use shimmer as a, a, a base shadow, but according to Charlotte, that is the recommended use. It's a really nice pale pink, and I, originally I thought uh, that it was going to look maybe ashy on my skin tone, but you can definitely see the pink hue to it, which um, is, yeah, a lot more flattering than I thought it was going to be. The Enhanced shade is a matte kind of mauve shade, and I'm just going to put that over the Prime shade. The Smoke shade is a matte kind of warm brown, and I'm just going to place that in the outer corner. So for me, when I'm creating an everyday look, I don't use all four of these shadows at once. I maybe use one or two at a time because I find that when you do use all four, they really just all blend together. And it could just be me because I am a makeup enthusiast, not a professional or an expert. I just, you know, like it and I enjoy putting it on my face. So there is a chance that there is a, a fancier way to do this that um, doesn't involve them all blending together, but that's just my experience. When I do use all four of them, they tend to meld together. Okay, so last shade is the pop shade, and I have personally never wet the brush when I have applied this, and I just apply a little just kind of in the center, um, I think it just is a personal preference whether you wet your brush or not. Personally, I feel like the payoff is, is fine without wetting the brush, so I just don't bother. I realize I probably should have zoomed you in for that part, um, but <laughs> better late than never. So this is how the shadow looks. Like I said, I just kind of plop the pop shade in the center and it's very shimmery and sparkly and I really like it. Like I said, I don't really use all four of these shadows all at once, but this is kind of how it looks all together. For mascara, I'm using this sample of the Hourglass Caution Extreme Lash Mascara. Um, I don't love this, but I don't hate it either. Uh, it uh, does definitely define the lashes. I don't really have super long lashes, so it's, you know, not really anything extraordinary on me. Um, it lasts okay also. I do find that it uh, flakes on me um, throughout the day and uh, it smudges a little bit uh, at the end of the day, but um, yeah, it's an okay mascara. I, for an everyday mascara, still really love the Glossier Lash Slick. And then my favorite mascara, which I think might be discontinued, is the Shu Umura Petal Lash. So that's very upsetting, um, but this one is okay. I mean, nothing extraordinary. 
and I don't know, I'm just a very, not apprehensive, but I don't really like to spend a lot of money on mascara because I do have shorter lashes and I just don't find that mascara is anything extraordinary on me. <laughs> I'm not going to fill in my brows because I'm too lazy to, but I will put gel in it. So I'm going to use the ABH Tip Brow uh, Gel Pomade, Pomade Gel. Okay, so I do also have this Charlotte Tilbury Instant Look in a Palette. This is the Natural Beauty one. It's the original one she came out with. So I'm going to use the bronzer and the highlighter from this palette. So I'll start with the bronzer first. As you can see, I have hit pan on this bronzer, which is very exciting. Um, but yeah, this bronzer is really nice. It's not quite the same uh, coloring as the Film Star bronzer, but it is a really nice bronzer. It's a little bit light for me at, on occasion, especially in the summertime. I don't feel like I get uh, quite as nice a payoff, but um, it is a nice, nice colored bronzer. So for the blush, you can either mix everything together or do the swirl pop situation. So I like to do a hybrid of that technique. So I will get a little bit of everything, but primarily the outer shade. So this blush is definitely more of a rosy nude shade, um, but is really nice and flattering and it almost acts as a dual blush bronzer situation. So it does help kind of chisel your face. And then I'm just going to take the highlighter from this palette and uh, put a little bit on. So the last thing is the lips. So I'm just going to take the lip liner and start lining my lips. I actually just sharpen this a little bit. And then with the Matte Revolution lipstick, I'm going to just spritz my face one more time. Okay, so this is the finished look featuring the Charlotte Tilbury Pillow Talk collection. This collection has been out for a while and I've been using it for a while and I'm still really loving it. The color palette is definitely something that for my skin tone, I didn't think that I would like, but I actually really have been enjoying it, especially the lipstick. The lipstick was the one that I was thinking to myself that's definitely not a shade for me, and it's definitely not one I typically gravitate towards, but I was worried that it would maybe wash me out or um, look a little too like Barbie pink, but it's just like a really nice hue that I think suits my skin tone really nicely. And same goes for the blusher and the eyeshadow palette. If I had to pick one of the items from the Charlotte Tilbury Pillow Talk line for you guys to check out, I would probably say the blush. And I might be just biased because blush happens to be my favorite makeup item, but I just really like the color of this blush and the formulation. Like I said, it is more of a radiant finish, so if you, if you don't like shimmer um, or you know a sheen then this one isn't for you because it's definitely not a matte blush there is a bit of a sheen to it but if you do like that then this is something you'd probably gravitate towards if you like shades like Tarte Exposed, um, Hourglass Mood Exposure, this is a blush that you would probably also enjoy. So that is it for me. I hope you guys are having a wonderful day. I hope you enjoyed watching this video and I will see you in my next one. Bye!